Hey guys, JT Shaver here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to simulate the Apple iPhone portrait mode effect with any photo in Photoshop. Sometimes we forget to turn portrait mode on or things are just happening too fast for us to be able to get our phone out and change the settings before we take the picture. If you've ever wanted to add some fancy background blur to your images, there's a way to do it in Photoshop even after you've taken the picture. So here's the image that we're going to be working with, and if you're a New Layer member, you can download the project files for this tutorial at newlayer.com, or of course, follow along with your own images. So once you've got your picture open, you want to double click to unlock the background, and we're going to rename that to Original. Then I'm going to right click and duplicate that layer and name that one Subject. The first thing that we want to do is isolate the subject from the background, so I'm going to press W or you can come up here and choose your quick selection tool. And I'm going to draw just on my subject, and I'll zoom in to make sure that everything is selected. And down here I need to kind of delete this little negative space from the selection, so I'm going to come and choose the magic wand tool, and zoom in here. And holding Alt, I'm going to click in there, and that will subtract that from my selection. Next, I'm going to right click and choose Select and Mask. And we're going to refine this mask just a little bit. So depending on how big your image is, these settings are going to change a little bit. But for this one, which is 1920 by 1080, I'm going to set the radius for edge detection to one pixel, the smooth to about two, the feather to about half a pixel, and then I'm going to shift the edge by about negative 5% and hit OK. Next, I'm going to come down here and click the Create New Layer Mask button and that'll create a new layer mask using our selection as a mask. So if I hide the original layer, you can see that it's just our subject. Next, we'll come and select the original layer again and right click and duplicate that again. And I'm gonna name this one background. And for now, I'm gonna hide my subject layer. And what we need to do on this is remove the subject from our background. So I'm gonna control click the layer mask thumbnail in the layers panel. But with my background layer selected, I'm gonna come up and choose Select, Modify, Expand, and I'm gonna expand the selection by about five pixels and hit OK. Next, I'll come up and click Edit, Fill, and you wanna make sure Content Aware is selected and leave the rest of the settings and hit OK. So I'll press Control D to deselect that and you can see that the subject was removed from the background. Now, it's not perfect, but that really doesn't matter because it's gonna be blurred out and the subject is gonna be covering that portion of the image when we're all done. Now I'll come over to the background layer and right click and duplicate that one more time. And I'm gonna name that Blurred. And then I'm gonna come up and choose Filter, Blur, Lens Blur. Now, unfortunately, Lens Blur is not supported by Smart Objects, which is why we created the copy of our background layer first, in case we wanna go back and change how blurry it is later. So I'm going to have the iris set to hexagon for the shape and set the radius to about 40 and leave everything else at zero and hit OK. So you can see our background is nice and blurry and what the lens blur does is simulate actual blur from a camera lens that just gives us a more realistic final image. Now if I come over to my layers panel and turn on that subject layer, you can see that the subject is in focus but the background is blurred out. If you want to make your subject stand out a little bit more, you can create some extra adjustment layers. So if I have the blurred layer selected, I can come up and choose a levels adjustment. And if I drag this middle point to the right just a bit, it will darken just the background of the image and the subject will remain the same brightness. And again, that just helps bring more attention to the subject. That's pretty much it. If I hold Alt and click the eyeball icon next to the original layer, it will hide all the other layers so you can see the original before and the after. That's it for now. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up so more people can see it, and make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Also, leave a comment below and let me know what you want to learn next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.